All right, we're here with Wayne Hutchinson, uh, director of the Reading Track at DragonCon. So how long have you been a director and how did you get involved with this? Uh, I've been the Wheaton Universe Track Director for four years, uh, mm -hmm. every year since 2007. Mm -hmm. And uh, I originally got started by volunteering in the Buffy Track and several other tracks around the con, um, mm -hmm. starting in the earlier part of the decade, 2000, 2001 era. Oh, okay. So what are the chat? I mean, how many, it seems like there's a lot of panels and a lot of, you know, events and things. How, how many do you think you had this year? Um, I believe we had 28 programming um, hours filled this year on, as panels, mm -hmm. or 28 slots in the panels filled. We had about 36 hours of programming total wow. um, spread across four days. Mm -hmm. And that was in uh, four different hotels. Um, across the uh, across the entire metro area, metro Atlanta area, so it was a pretty mm -hmm. busy year for us. So, how do you recruit panels? Do you do you have people? I'm sure at this point you have people that come to you and want to do panels. But what yeah. about like the actors and things? How do you how do you get them organized and, and here to the event? Uh, the actors, for the most part, are handled through our guest services department. Um, mm -hmm. What I do is I just have a long list of actors that I like to um, say I'd like to have all these people on a list and go through and uh, say, I'd like to have all these people on a list mm -hmm. and say, um, this is the actors I really want. I actually categorize it into um, television, movie, writers, um, because it's uh, we're not just interested in the people on the screen, we're interested in behind the scenes folks as well. Okay. So if I have a category of writers I want, I'll put those in a category, um, really in no particular order. Joss is always at the top, mm -hmm. um, so we'd love to see Joss. But, so that's how we get them, and then I work with guest services throughout the year to find out who's available, mm -hmm. uh, what terms, things like that. Mm -hmm. They come back to me and say, we can get this person, this person, this person. I'm, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I hardly ever turn down a guest. There mm -hmm. are a few occasions where they say, would you be interested in having this person as a guest? I always say yes, because I think anybody, even with a small role in any show, uh, can really give us a lot more insight than mm -hmm. we actually believe they can. Five minutes on the screen can equal 30 minutes of a good story. Yep. So that's the way we look at it. And then as far as getting panelists, um, we reach out to the fan community and say things like if you, you know, we, we give them uh, criteria, say if you like this, if this is your take on Angel, if this is your take on Buffy, it isn't more or less just getting a list of names and people that are willing to do it. Um, there's no shortage of people that are willing to do it, but we do have to screen for some quality there. So mm -hmm. what it is is we'll participate in online conversations on our forums or via email and pick a topic just a, mostly a test topic and throw it out there and say what's your take on this particular scenario in Angel without using the internet for searching just please tell me a paragraph what, what's right off the top of your head mm -hmm. typically if I see uh, I look for different things if someone's extremely positive or if they're extremely negative or anything I actually want to kind of mix those people together on a panel and say you know I want somebody that can actually justify where certain things happen and why certain don't so it is sort of a screening process but it's mm -hmm. not rigid Mm -hmm. uh, but I just mm -hmm. want to make sure someone's actually paying attention to things um, like the subtext and uh, stuff. So. And that's at WhedonUniverse.com, right? right? That's where the forums WhedonUniverse are? WhedonUniverse.com, right. Oh, okay. So what's your own personal history with, with Whedonverse? So what, what shows r really clicked in for you? Well, I first really realized who uh, Joss Whedon was when I saw the original Buffy movie in 1992. I actually went to the theater to see it. Mm -hmm. um, I was a big fan of the movie The Lost Boys, and I thought it was more or less just another one of those in the same genre. And it did end up being sort of the same genre, a little bit more quirky. Mm -hmm. And I kind of appreciated that quirkiness mm -hmm. uh, mixed with that seriousness. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't completely a spoof or a parody, and that's what I liked about it. So um, I did like that characters actually died. I did like that you know villains were actually evil, and they can be smart or stupid or whatever. It, mm -hmm. it kind of broke the mold uh, for a lot of things. So. There was a lot of other movies at that time, like um, Heather's and uh, Pump Up the Volume, that were really kind of touching on that, you know, junior and senior in high school kind of um, era, and that's where I was at the time. And so it kind of appealed to me in that way that, you know, we're we're struggling with more than just all the all these other things. We're, we also have our own demons and things like that. So it was a little bit of an insight mm -hmm. into that. Um, the other thing that really stood out about me is I was a big fan of the television series Roseanne and I didn't know that Josh wrote on Roseanne until about the latest, last two seasons but when he did start writing the last two seasons I, I liked it okay but a lot of people don't know I'm a, I'm a big fan of Josh's dad's work because he wrote on the electric company oh, okay and I didn't realize it until about maybe 10 years ago I put the two together I was like, oh. so, <laughs> so I guess it was kind of ingrained early you know <laughs> was there any Joss Whedon show you didn't like is there anything mm. that you know that that rubs you the wrong way um, there isn't really one I didn't like. I was a big fan of Dollhouse, big fan of Firefly. I was unsure about Firefly at first. Mm -hmm. um, 
only because it was completely different from what he was doing with Buffy and Angel. Mm -hmm. But um, I gave it a chance, and at first I wasn't that keen on it, but I realized it's probably because it was not shown the way that it should have been shown. And, mm. and I kind of got a, when I get, when the DVDs came out, I kind of got a real good, better understanding for it. But my initial viewing of Firefly was not very well received. I didn't think it was great. I think mm -hmm. it was, I think it reached too hard, but I now I realize it was just out of sequence. Yeah. So, yeah, good, good, good. Yeah. Well, what have been some of your highlights over the years directing the Whedon track? Oh, well, I have to say, first and foremost, it's always meeting guests. Uh, mm -hmm. These are people that you see on television. You know, growing up as a kid, I didn't think I'd ever be able to meet anyone that works in television or mm -hmm. even someone who works in, uh, you know, as a writer or an artist, or, you know, even uh, people that work in comics or that make collectibles. I mm -hmm. never thought I would get to meet these people and uh, that are really close to the industry and the production process. And it's neat to meet. James Marsters, even though I've met him several times, it's neat every time I see the guy, like, nope, he's really here again. Yeah. It's neat to meet people that um, that you follow on social media outlets and see that, yeah, this is, they're really just a real person and this is their job and their career and they're really just trying to ink out a live and more than mm -hmm. anything, the celebrity kind of comes along with what they originally set out to do. Mm -hmm. I think it also helps me learn that these actors never set out to be famous, they just set out to work in the industry and to act. That's an epiphany from working on with conventions that you see. That mm -hmm. Every day, they're just they grew up like I did, and they just got into the industry. But um, the highlights are always the guests. Um, I love really good cerebral discussion panels. Um, mm -hmm. I like to get a little smart. I'm not, I'm a very laid back, quirky, funny guy most of the time. And the only time I really like to get serious is when I sit down and talk, joss with other people, and talk Star Trek or Star Wars or anything, only because. Even if the conversation goes a little south, there's a little friction, it's still just entertainment, it's still just media. It's not a real life and death issue. So mm -hmm. you can get a little serious about it and the consequences aren't there. Mm -hmm. So it's a safe discussion. So I love the discussions we have here at Dragon Con. Mm -hmm. um, and it's from anything to uh, like going and seeing these uh, live shows that all these people put on at Dragon Con. We put on mm -hmm. a couple of live shows ourselves, but just mm -hmm. getting to see what the other track directors are doing, getting a free moment in your schedule to go sit down and listen to somebody talk about Harry Potter or robotics or electronic frontier or you know, you know, net neutrality. Those are things I like to sit and listen to uh, when mm -hmm. I can steal an hour away from my own programming. So okay. those are always highlights when I get to see another track director's work. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. you know. Well, what are your plans for next year? Do you have anything germinating yet? or? We have several ideas. Uh -huh. We have a lot of good panel ideas. We're mm -hmm. planning live shows. We're planning main programming. Um, mm -hmm. I'm already thinking about guests. I'm already thinking about uh, you know what kind of different uh, academic panels. Um, mm -hmm. I'm on the lookout out there to see if there's something really good uh, as far as any kind of fan-based work goes, whether it's a fan-based art show, which we've done in the past. or mm -hmm. This year was a big year for fan films. We showed a Firefly and a Dr. Horrible fan film this year as part of programming. and. That's a very rigid screening process that starts now. So mm -hmm. if somebody's got something in the works, I'm going to watch it pretty closely. And we've turned down quite a few of those before, too, because I just didn't think it would be uh, well appreciated here. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. again, this is a year-round process for us. It'll take a couple weeks off to breathe, but we've already got a preliminary schedule for 2011 sort of laid out. So, oh. you know, as far as most of it, what's what we're going to do next year. Uh, we are going to do some new things next year that we and we are going to retire some things from this year that okay. have been kind of staples for a while. So okay. trying okay. to keep it new and fresh for everybody. <laughs> well, I know I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much for Thank your you. time. Thank you. Uh -huh.